think there's only two a month, maybe three on the 31 days of the month. Uh, we might have three uh, fifth days, uh, but they are few and far between. So tonight I was, I had a message in the uh, Word is Right Facebook Messenger saying, hey, is there an event tonight? And I was like, well, let me just make an event real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to make sure that we do that, that we're providing that kind of service. All right. Uh, it says we are being live streamed. So I am assuming I'm trying not to make an ass out of you or me, but I am assuming that that means that we are actually live on Facebook. So welcome everyone to the word is right. This is a pop up uh, wine and pint open mic. I hope you got your drink. I hope you got your glass of something. It doesn't have to be boozy. It's just got to be drinkable. Uh, some sort of thing to, oh my God, accidental pull. I want to come crawl up under those covers and just like, be warm. It looks so comfortable where you're at. Oh man, I want to be. Does anyone, oh, I want to go. I'm crawl. recovering from my booster. So I got my booster right. yesterday. Me too, oh. yesterday. Oh, but my band aid's off. Maybe I head. wish I could carry you into my head and we can just, can just cuddle, and recover. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's worth it. Y'all. Go Last night I spiked a fever. <laughs> I was not feeling well. It was horrible. But today is much better. <laughs> but I'm sending you lots of hugs and love. Y'all go get your boosters, please. All right. Uh, yes, let's let's feed each other poetically tonight. All right, so, so a couple ground rules for tonight. Welcome to The Word is Right. For those of you who do not know me, I am Marissa Prada. I co-author The Word is Right. I run uh, a lot of the programs that we have here at Word is Right or produce them. What happened to Deadpan's face? Deb, oh, you're looking down. It looked like you had had a filter on your face. And I'm like, what happened to deadpan? Uh, that was a little scary. Dude, I got a new beanie for your, your show, by the way. Yes, yes. Um, I'm very excited. I am a beanie public now. I need to, yes, get beanies for her show. All right. So anyways, tonight is just a, a random, crazy, fun pop-up night. Poet Con Ross Faya is in the house. Uh, she's going to help me co-host this. Uh, help me with the list, help me run the show, because two minds work better than one, and sometimes one plus one equals 11, and that shit happens here, and I need all of the help I can get. All right, so uh, we're just going to go. There, there's a, It's a small group. It's very improv tonight, so you know, I would say take four or five minutes, whatever you want tonight. You got stuff to plug, plug your stuff. Uh, Word is right is, is, is happy to be networking people and poets. You got shows coming up. Please post that to Word is right. Let's go. Uh, let's support each other together. We all rise is my motto. Um, the only thing that I do ask is please no hate speech at all whatsoever, period. If I feel your threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby gone, and not allowed the fuck back in. That way, uh, also, now we move into what you can and cannot say. Uh, you can say fucking shit and pussy and dick and all those beautiful, magical words. Mm, yes. Just not hate speech. Uh, so that's where I draw the line. Uh, please understand the art form and we are all artists and some of us talk fucking dirty to you and please do not take that as consent. Make sure you do get consent before sliding to the DMs of all the artists here tonight. That includes the private messenger that is there for your uh, convenience. If I get any sort of notifications that you're abusing the right to direct message the artist here this evening. He will also be gone, baby gone, and not allowed the fuck back in. So please, let's just be adults. Be respectful. Let's have fun. Let's have a good show. If you're watching live on YouTube, get your ass here. That's all I can say. I got Lizzie, Danelle, Chris George, also known as C-Spot, uh, E, Robert F, an accidental poet. Who else wants the fuck on the mic tonight? Let's go. Poet Con, do you have a poem to launch us with this evening? To lose you? the mic. Mm. Lose that mic, damn it. Um, hey, y'all. Poet oh, Con, yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, you guys. I'm so glad y'all hanging out with us tonight and we're together so we are whole and lacking nothing. Um, <clears throat> this is my season for grace, for favor, 
for love, for joy, my season, to allow myself to be loved, nurtured, noticed, to allow people, someone, anyone in. This is my season to reach for the unknown, to reach until I grab the sun-kissed peach at the top of the orchid, draped in the sun rays, all these gloomy days, but this is my season for grace and favor, for love for joy, my season, amen. Um, okay, that was some new shit that I had. Uh, ooh, here's another one, okay. Yeah. So my workshop poems, pulling out the dark shit tonight, all right. Release the anecdote, the grip on the tip. I love that they all taste different, the breakdown, the roll up, the cush on my fingertips, traces of green laced faces. I lick them, suck both phalanges. I trick them. We are all gonna die. Live in this pussy tonight. Leave me to die alone. Oh my God. Oh, damn it. Oh, let's go. Oh. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I called sat alongside with you the other day. It was like, <laughs> yes, man. We showed up for the poet. Uh, pray for our poets. Our poets are out here swimming through COVID to serve us mm. and getting caught up in the COVID web. Damn it. One time for Richie Marufo, who is the poet heart of my city. I need him to shake that shit and come on back, you know? So say a prayer for my buddy. Lots of prayers for Richie. Uh, I'm hoping that he is, yeah, I'm hoping he's back soon. We need him back to the mic. If there's anything I can do to help uh, alleviate the workload or if there's anything you guys need in El Paso for me, let me know. Uh, We got, we we come to support each other. We really, truly do in this community. All right, I'm gonna uh, put the uh, the list in the chat. Uh, so if you are not on the list, then get your name on it. I've got Lizzie Dinell, Chris George E, Robert F, Accidental Poet, Nick P, Terry Rose, and Poetastic. Those of you who just came in, if you want on the list, drop your name. I'll get you. Deadpan, Lizzie, are you ready? I'm always ready. And I loved your Albuquerque beanie you were for the debut of my show. Well, so this will be the New, New Mexico United, and it says Somos Unidos on it, so it's even cooler. Uh, and it's yellow and black, and it's really, it's really fun. So don't That's worry, awesome. I'll still be repping the 505. That's awesome. Awesome. I'm anyway, happy to be here. Uh, There's a beautiful poem, Khan. Uh, always happy to see you. And all the prayers for Richie. We love Richie in B1s. Uh, such a great part of the week. All right. Uh, so last night at Ma Duke's mic, she gave me kind of a prompt, uh, cause one of my poems I have eclectically sexy. And so she told me to turn that into a prompt. So I wrote this today, it's called Some Kind of Sexy. It's all about confidence, letting your voice be what it is, your skin feeling sensual to you always. The I don't give a fuck attitude persistent. You can throw on a beanie, your cape, but at the end of the day, it will merely be a cute accessory. We are our own magic our words, the potions. Once they gulp down the proses, the spell has been cast. The eclectically sexy persona becomes honest, contagious, the virus you wanna catch, no quarantine required, unless of Beanie Feldstein, the one Beanie I would love to be stuck with. Thanks. (laughs) That was so cute. That was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, and I totally forgot to make the announcements before we started tonight that uh, we are hosting online 
New Year's at Word is Right. Uh, we are, we're hosting it uh, alongside the Grapevine Sway right here on Zoom. Uh, we're doing, we're starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for so, so for some of those of you who aren't going to be up all night, you can come early and read and get on that list early. And we are dropping the ball in each time zone. So we have uh, Ramar Thompson and, and Deb Penlazy are doing Eastern Standard Time. Sirocco Shaman is going to do Central Standard Time. Hokan and I are doing uh, man Mountain Standard Time, and we'll figure out someone for Pacific uh, Standard Time. But yes, if you don't have anything to do this New Year's Eve, come kick it with us poets, because I sure as shit am not making out with anyone this New Year's Eve, and I I'm going to just make out with my fucking bottle of champagne. Uh, and that's cool with me, because that bottle's going to go to work. <laughs> work bottle, damn it. Clock in, damn it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was gonna go to work and we'll go work. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so y'all, if you want to just hang out and kick it with us, New Year's Eve, you're welcome to do that. And uh, we'd love to have you. The show is free. The Zoom room holds up to 100 people. So let's go. All right. Uh, here we go. Next up, we got Danelle Callahan, one of my beautiful, uh, uh, amazing friends. Uh, she is in the women's erotic anthology, Touching Tongues, uh, along with me, Dead Pan Lizzie, Poet Khan. Uh, 31 women are in this anthology. I'm so proud and honored to call her my friend. Thank you so much, Danelle, um, for being here. What you got for us tonight? Well, uh, I got uh, I got a little bit of erotica. It's called I Miss. I miss, I miss that kiss. That take me by the shoulders, draw me in close, lip lock up top, feet and hands scrambling to undo. I miss, I miss those lips, luscious lips curved into a sly side smile right before you swoop in for that moist kiss. Moist, I know you hate that word, M-O-I-S-T, moist. Well, what are lips and mouth supposed to be so they can lick and nip and suck and sip and suckle and lick again? Those moist lips. Mm -hmm. Thought you might change your mind on that word. I miss, I miss those shoulders that pull me in. Wanna wrap myself in them. Can I be your vest then? Draw me around you, never let me go nowhere. Chest to chest, face to face, to feel your heartbeat next to mine while we kiss. Ah, oh, I miss that kiss. Yes, <laughs> yes. One pants. <laughs> 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 yes, Janelle Callahan, one pants. Oh, you got to Just like if we do, when we do another, we're gonna go another round. It's a small enough group. We'll go another round. Uh, oh my God, one pants. Those of you who stay will get to hear the story of one pants, and you oh, will be no. better knowing it. <laughs> All right, Poet Con, you got the list. Uh, next up on the mic, we got Chris George, C Spot. Oh, I love Chris George. Wait, Chris, you're muted. Yes, you can share screen, but you're muted. Okay, you hear me now? Blink. Oh my God, yes, let's go. I thought so, I thought you would, yeah, okay. Uh, let me uh, get to the beginning of this slideshow. Uh, this is a uh, Christmas display here in uh, Newark, Delaware, Harmony Hills, where we live. And uh, let's see. A Snowman in Alexandria a few years ago, a photograph by Alan, Amanda, and a uh, fake snowman in Hudson Park, Baltimore. Uh, this is from the neo poet, Big Red Plastic Light of Santa. He stands across the room, a black, black lit twinkle in his eyes, with a glow in his cheeks, polyethylene. Memories rushing forward of dearest family and friends. Most are still here with me, but too many have departed. 
the specter of Christmas past visits trying to haunt my thoughts, despite the spirit's best efforts and winter so gray and unrelenting. I'm not saddened by their absence. The company of light up Santa assures that I will still feel those I've lost again, like toes warmed by the fire. Their good memories are permanent, like the smile on the face of my red plastic Santa. And this is a um, carnation in a restaurant. I used to take my mom to this particular restaurant in Towson, Maryland, uh, and do some shopping for her every week. Uh, she passed away in August uh, 2010. Christmas carnation. This Christmas will be spent without you in an empty restaurant with furry lights and a single pink carnation. And let me finish with this. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. You work and work for years and years. You're always on the go. Never take a minute off, too busy making dough. Someday you say you'll have your fun when you're a millionaire. Imagine all the fun you'll have in your old rocking chair. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself when you're still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, it's later than you think. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, it's later than you think. You're going to take that ocean trip, no matter come what may. You've got your reservations, but you just can't get away. Next year, for sure, you'll see the world. You'll really get around. But how far can you travel when you're six feet underground? Enjoy yourself, it's later than you think. Enjoy yourself when you're still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, it's later than you think. Thanks. Oh my goodness, Chris George, everybody! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear you again. All right. Man. Oh, man, later than you think. Wow. <clears throat> Take up the moment. That was beautiful. <clears throat> All right, Con, who we got next? Next, we got to the stage E. E. Mackler. Hi there, sir. All right. Hello. I usually don't talk, but I will this time. This is an original piece entitled Get Your Kicks on Route 6 Eclipse, and it's about space travel. <laughs> Stiff society's lifeless stare, the food they eat, the threads they wear, a sphere in space, a sphere in space, but man, it's square. Get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. So swing through the spheres, past moon, past Mars, the asteroid belt, and other stars. Comets, quarks, and quasars. Get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. So it was light years on, low on fuel, eyed the gauge, not looking too cool. Sign ahead said beans and gruel, get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. So my tin can docked and I floated in, eyeballed the place, digging the scene. It was the galaxy famous Klatow's drive-in, get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. There were cats of all colors swinging to a band. The big boss came out and speeched a speech so grand. It was Michael Rennie telling us where we stand. Get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. Mm -hmm. 
So I grooved on up to the Big Bang Buffet. They saw my axe. That's this. And they begged me to play. I was itching to jam. What could I say? Get your kicks on Route 6 Eclipse. So I'm hoping he comes and kicks it with us and we get some more artists to come and play some music tonight with us. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, next to the stage we have, if I could get my fingers right, um, Robert F. posting the chat right now. Bam. Woo Good evening, I'm Robert Fleming. I'm a writer from Delaware. I'm going to share my video about New Year's Eve. Can you hear me? I'm waiting you hear for me? my police escort to take me to rehab. I've been cut off from alcohol. So until my escort comes, I've been having Clorox martinis. Won't you join me? Disgusting. Before I go, I want to read my selection for Devil's Party Press Instant Noodles number three. New Year's Eve overnight rest stop. <coughs> Who are you? What did we do last night? Naked Motel. Nolens Bayou Blood. Hurricane in a Glass. Alligator Motel. Oh, what would I give for a hurricane? Screwdriver Screws Nails. Bar Brawl. Police Arrive. Jail Motel. Now my police escort will be here shortly. 200 milliliter, 40% ABV hot toddy. Mmm. Times Square ball pressure drops. Hospital motel. White Pine Bay, Oregon. 1959 Ford Fairlane <laughs> driver tires. Bates Motel. 
sounds like a lovely place to spend the night. Bath towel drop off. Blush blonde hair shower drain clog. Coroner motel. <clears throat> oh, officer. So I have to pee in this glass before you'll take me to rehab? Only if I get a martini. Thank you. That, oh, Robert F. <laughs> the, the, prompt, the prompt for that from the publisher was, the worst things that can happen to you New Year's Eve. <laughs> Yikes. All right. All right. Robert F. Thank you. Heck Good yeah. Stuff. Heck yeah. Next we have to the mic, uh, Miss Accidental Poet. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to muster all my energy. <laughs> all right. This is called safe words. Words echoing in the endless enclaves at the edge of everything. You say, all these words you got, you need to get your safe words ready. But there are no safe words with you. They all drip dangerously from your beautiful mouth feeding deeply buried seeds of desire, growing into wildflowers, long stretched out fields of baby blue wildflowers, fodder feeding wildfires, the silver lining slipping from in front of the sun, sprinkling flecks of gold so that they land on brazenly bronzed features, wistfully walking through the field, feeling the fondling of flower fingers brushing up against my warm, exposed skin. The tall stalks would rub gently against the outlines of my thighs. I lay down in the landscape of your sensory overload, dizzy in the haze of your vibration recalling how you recited the incantations, inciting riots on my skin as the profanely possessive words rumbled off your lips. Again and again, my Rita, my sweet Rita, you're mine, my Rita declarations documenting your deed of ownership with a de dangerous dissertation, demanding dedicated audience with my truest constituents, formulated among friends, fictitiously flirting, forgetting the fallacy of forever, finding false prophecy, hiding in the stories of your tongue, spun from threads of thoughts of true connection. We started playfully provoking, progressed into each of us having to prove our point. You trying to woo me with two-way words down a one-way alley, me crashing with that last turn, not seeing the road in front of me, our pef perfectly paired soundtrack playing in the background, happy for a moment. Just two kids with caramel sundaes until they melted. And all we had left was a sticky mess. Maybe one day I could lick your soul clean and you can kiss my emotions away. And that's happy. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes. Oh, wow. And I realized I've done this in a thing with uh, poet friends before. I just realized that. I try not to do that. 
Thank you. What was, what was it that, that AJ said today, Con? I'm trying to find it on my paper of all the notes I took today on Instagram. It, 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 maybe it wasn't, maybe I thought it was AJ. Says something like, uh, good dick can can, fix can trauma. Heal past trauma. Was that was Maribel's cell. Oh, Mar Mariel Shinobi was said, it? good dick yeah. can heal trauma or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was on today. Wait, well, was the yes, right, Rita? I yes. I, there was some, there was some good dick talk. I remember that. Y'all, like, I'm still <laughs> trying to decipher all the motherfucking notes I took today. I got to still, I was right, I'm right here where you left me this afternoon. <laughs> right, so the erotic poems are welcome. They are welcome. Mm. You already know that, but just, you know, a little nudge, you know what I'm saying? Heck yeah, sensual poems. That if was there's a, If there's a dick that's meant to heal trauma, like, I'll, I'll be goddamn. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it this way. Anyway, um, is all right. Let me know. Okay. But that was beautiful, and you're beautiful, and I want to come crawl up in that damn bed and pull the big covers up over us, and we can have flashlight underneath. Yes. Yeah, look, look around. Yeah. Next, we have. The amazing, awesome Miss Potterotica herself. Marissa. <laughs> so I went, I went to my doctor this week because I had some I got some health issues happening. Um, but one of the things that uh now it's been a hot minute. I've not been to the doctor since pre-COVID. All right. I just don't go. Uh, unless there's something really drastically wrong with me. And so I'm going through the battery of questions. And one of the questions that they asked was, you know, uh, do you feel down? Do you feel depressed? And I'm like, is there a sliding scale for this question? <laughs> and they're like, do you feel blue? And I'm like, it's motherfucking COVID. It's the holidays. And it's been cloudy for three days in a row here. What shade of blue? Hell, hey, sorry. I went, and she she's like, well, do you feel depressed? And what did she say? And hopeless. And I said, huh, where's the hope? Uh, there's no fucking hope. And she says, you know, and then she goes on to the self-harm questions. And I'm like, well, if I say yes to anything, you're just going to institutionalize me. So I say no to everything. But it reminded me of this poem. Um, it reminded me of this poem that I wrote. And so I'm going to read it for you guys tonight. Uh, just know I rarely do trigger warnings. Uh, I, I'm almost anti-trigger warning, but I will just, for courteous, it's the fucking holidays, trigger warning for uh, a domestic violence. Uh, it's titled, What's Next? Do you feel safe at home? Was never a question the doctor asked when I was a child. What would I have said? No. What kind of power does a child have? Adults don't listen. Adults don't pay attention. Certainly no one has made the answer be yes yet. What next? The doctor takes me home, becomes my parent calls the police to do nothing again. All the eyes in the world and not a single mouth to mount a rescue. What next? I go back home to my imagination, wait for my wings, get another year older, turn 18 and never look back. Do you feel safe at home? was asked by my OB two months pregnant before I could even be seen. Yes, was always my answer. What next? Was she going to take me home? Teach me how to be a mother? Safe spaces were as pretend as space itself. What next? I go back home to my imagination, 
Stuff dollar bills in a baby book. Remove bullets from the Glock. Lots of blankets on the floor. Door locked. Need another pillow for my back. Last trimester. Do you feel safe at home? I wanted to scratch my deceitful eyes from my face since they swam through warning signs of tears. I whispered, no. What next? Was the, what was the point? Doctors don't do anything. Adults don't do anything. He's been in rehab a month. There's no bruises, just tears. She prescribed me antidepressants to avoid postpartum depression. What next? It's in my medical records. I leave him, he uses this against me, he steals my baby, even if I break free. Building our wings out of old green men on paper who can't save me either. What is next indeed? Next will be another apology and promises of sobriety. Next will be him inside of me, no consent required ever. Next will be a funeral for two. If I cannot figure out how to glue together these wings out of tears and spit and prayer, my tiny baby, I pray that's what, what's next for us is tomorrow. Thank you. Ooh. That piece still fucks me up. Powerful. That was heavy. Powerful. So wow. Space for you, baby. Mm. Yeah, man. Um. Mm. Yes, this is where we do that. So, I promise, though, if we do another round, I won't do something heavy. I'll do something funny. Or oh, man. I, I love to see all the different aspects of you. Because no matter what kind of poem it is, you're going to give it your whole ass. You give it all of you. You know what I mean? And I love that about you, um, that you stretch either way, whatever side it is. And all my poets that can do that, you know, that's when you do something you love, you want to be able to do do it in different shades, you know? And um, anyway, so yeah, we are here for it tonight. Hey, the holidays, you know, um, yeah, you know, just acknowledging that it may not be a good holiday for every fucking body. And uh, most people are surrounded by a bunch of people right now, or at least that's ideal. Some of us aren't. Some of us are on a Zoom, kicking it with people all over the US, the world. And we're blessed. And I'm so blessed to be with y'all. So. Next, we have to the stage. Let me get my list together here real quick. We have the amazing, the awesome, the paleo logos. <laughs> I've learned to just take it slow, sound out all those syllables. <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't mess it up. <laughs> you got it, though. I yeah, love it. <laughs> So glad to have you with us tonight, love. Woo, woo, woo. It's great to see you again. And it's crazy because I was just co-hosting with you two days ago and it was awesome with you and Kit. <laughs> I'm just saying it was really awesome. You should go back you and know. watch that. <laughs> on YouTube, yeah. All right, so let's get into it. So um, I'll give you all a haiku and then I'll give you... Um, this one of this newer pieces I've been working on. Here we go. Haiku. Pop a pill or two. Numb away the infection. Pandemic still here. And this is my New Year's poem because I write one on New Year's like I do for my birthday. So this one is titled Three, Six, Three, degrees of pain, the loss of life, the pain of grief's hands, 
the sickness of the world. Six degrees of separation, the torture from pain's past, the lockup from present situation, the release from future hands, the problematic pandemic, the virtual connection, expansion of mind's imagination. Five proud achievements, the performances of a lifetime, NYC Poetry Festival, New York and Poets Cafe, barbed wire open mic series, and more. The meeting of new faces from the community deciding to host again and feeling adoration, the first book, the opening up of a new chapter, 2021. You took a lot away from me. You gave me more than I could ever wish for. You gave me more than an adverse reaction. I took each ad, fought it in a verses, with ink and paper, created a reaction, swallowed a sparrow to become a raven. Voices of the fallen were heard. I had conversations with grief, cried more oceans than climate change created. Everything I think is all in my mind between the calamity and catharsis as morning flowers bloom from an armful of poppies. It was hardly a struggle from within. It was sweet before it was sour from the song that was singing me back home, back to home. Stuck in my abyss, inspired by actual events, epiphanies of the soul, stuck in the belly of the snake that was a guanaco binge before the streetlights came on. I felt the ebb and flow from the feet this past year and wave farewell to the year, like old school yard crushes with no Prozac prescriptions. Take my mask. Wear it, a sinister Gengar smile underneath the nightmares my skull holds. I am more than my six degrees of separation. I am eight degrees of separation. And I will continue for many more 365 and 366 days each year. I'm done. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Tribute! Oh my God! Yes. For those of you who don't know that about that poem, he just listed the twenty books that we launched this year. That by their titles, it's so exciting. Nick. In rhyme. Oh you know what I'm saying? Come through, cat. I had to. I was like, I was like, let me see, like, because uh, you never heard that one. So I was like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me present that one and everything. You know, <laughs> so I gotta kind of like bring that one here, you know? <laughs> and generally, Lisa Brian Franco is here, right? And his book, Everything I Think Is All in My Mind, right? And that's a good shout out. And just so you know, Nick, uh, I don't know, uh, I have not announced this to, to the, the, all of the poets yet, uh, but we are doing an annual anthology at Red or Green Books for all the debut poets. So uh, the 20 of you, well, the 19 of you will have an opportunity to submit to an anthology for next year. And then each year we're gonna add to it. So the 22, 2022 poets will be able to do the uh, add into the anthology for next year. And we're just gonna kind of keep adding and adding and adding. And so Forever. each year, year over year, there will be Forever. a vo you know, volumes. And so you can get the anthology annually from all these poets and collect them um yes yes it's it's Actually, just yes. an extra perk like an extra part of being part of red or green books and i'm so excited to do that for you guys um, that's so awesome thank yeah. you so much marissa yeah it's it's gonna be hella fucking fun can you imagine the nine, 19 of us in a book together <laughs> that'd be lit, <laughs> that'd be lit. <laughs> i'm just saying and as, as we're talking, Kemlin Bappy is coming in the room, right? And Kemlin is going to be part of the books that we're launching next year. Uh, I'm so excited. Uh, Kemlin Bappy in the house. And actually, Kemlin is going to be our original uh, one woman show here at Word is Right. We're going to debut her show in January. Uh, she's going to, it's going to be amazing. Curtain Call is the series, and we'll be doing a one woman or what one poet shows. And Kemlin Bappy will, will debut that right here at Word is Right. What's up, Kem? If you need on the list, drop your name in the chat, you guys. Uh, poet Con will get you on the list. I don't want to hold up the train. Here we go. 
said, all right, all right, all right, Kimberly. Hey, everybody. So glad to have y'all with us tonight. Um, so I did just drop the list in here. Let me drop her one more time. Next, we have to the stage, Poetastic. Yay! Yay! Because you made me feel fantastic. Start my voice. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hope everyone ready for some fun under the Potastic Poet Credible Sun. The fun has just begun. All right. My name is Ed Potastic. Hope everyone feeling fantastic. Please give me the time so you can draw my rhyme for all your foods to blind. I got two pieces here. You know they're going to rhyme. This is called. Um, this is called. You're my son. You're the son that gives me warmth. You're Mercury that gives me knowledge. You're Venus that gives me love. You're the moon that gives me dreams. You're the earth that gives me purpose. You're Mars that gives me strength. You're Jupiter that gives me growth. You are Saturn that gives me beauty. You are Uranus that gives me desire. You are Neptune that gives me chills. You are Pluto that gives me fuel. You are the stars that give me light. You are Halley's Comet that gives me praise. You are the skies that give me oxygen. You are the seas that give me clarity. You are the flowers that give me joy. You are the heavens that gives me grace. You are the days that gives me my tomorrows. All right, and I got one more story for Encore. This is a little spicy piece to say least. This is called Naughty Santa. It's cold and snowy outside. Why not stay in? Honey, please pass the cookies and wine. There's a pink and warm gift I need to attend. Sweetie, you can call me Santa. I'm full of holly jolly delights. Enough with the boring banter. Santa wants to ride your sleigh tonight. Let me unwrap your colorful wrapper. Santa needs to find his holiday surprise. Is it me or has it gotten damper? I see the bright bells dangling in your eyes. Sweet, let me fill in your nice sleek stocking. I want to fill it with holiday cheer. Do you see the throbbing? Oh no, I'm not stopping. Is that shocking? Wow, look at those big, perky, and jiggling ornaments. Mine, if Santa could hold them. Leave me, you won't have an unsatisfied disappointment. They'll be the most nice, sparkly, and polished gems. Santa wants to kiss your pink mistletoe, baby. Let me burn your fire. Let me lick your candy cane while you glow. Let Santa check off your list of desires. Santa wants to go deep down in your chimney. He wants to deliver you a huge present. Have to admit the nice scenery. Do you want some of Santa's luminescence to reach transcendence? Santa's lust and desires keep glowing brighter than Rudolph's nose. In many times, in many ways, I'll give you a Merry Christmas to you, my rose. Don't worry, I'll shovel the moody black coal away. Oh, you're interested in Santa's Christmas tree? Please don't be afraid to decorate it. Santa's going to make you loose, clear, and at ease. Santa's ready to pinch that nice holiday tent. Now it's time to send the tree home. Now it's time to send extra wood in the fireplace. Oh, did I hear a sudden gasp or a loud moan? No, I see the red and green going across your face. You're shaking more than any bells. I hear you ringing in jolly good pleasure. Do you feel the Christmas bell? No more displeasure for the burning leisure. Time for Santa to ride his holiday sleigh. Come on, my cute, sweet, and delightful reindeer. Time to rush and crush the grinchiness away. Run faster, 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 my dear. Let me spank those holiday hams to move more, more, and more. We need to warm the pale night away. Do you feel the scorching downpour? If so, let us play, play, and play. Santa needs to take a break for Christmas sake. I feel myself going for a snooze. Time to dream in the blanket lake. Time to pay over dues in the holiday blues. Thank you. <laughs> yes! Many yes! times, many ways. Oh, fantastic. Shovel oh. <laughs> right. the moody black coals away. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Moody, we love you. Like, ain't got nothing but love for you here. <laughs> okay. Let's go! Oh shit! Let's go! <laughs> Thank you, Potastic, lovey. Um, heck yeah! One time for the sexy Christmas time poems, damn it. Woo woo woo! Okay. 
Sometimes we need some desire for Christmas. I'm just saying, stir that up, stir that up. All right, put a little salt on that. All right, next we have, forgive me y'all, I'm figuring this list as I'm, you know what I mean? But we have Terry to the stage. Terry, my dear. Oh my I God, it's Terry Rose Johnson. I'm gonna put everybody else over here but you. Hey, Terry, He's darling. He's sexy I'm fighting. I just had to do that. I had to shout out Terry Rose Jersey. Yeah, I've, I've been talking about this book everywhere I go, so I know people know about it, but um, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go out there soon and, like, uh, really put it in people's faces or well, something you know we can always do another like we can always do another open mic where everyone is invited to read um we can also do something where uh, maybe we we can find someone to do a video and we all kind of do an excerpt maybe a stanza and then we put uh like a found poem together in a stanza video kind of as a a trailer to the book it's, it's funny you should say that because that's exactly what i have <laughs> let's go let's ready go, cherry rose okay these are the last lines found in the poems in that book and touching tongues the love child hands holding my hands please good girl together we lovers moan this is what we came for does that even matter if i've already been caught yes and then tell me to hush Let's have a left hand victory. Cream brulee. You're welcome. I will pleasure you. And we can go at it again. To make me a delicious treat. I'd happily go into a di diabetic coma for more. This is what we came for. I'm ready. Are you ready? Your move. Let's go again 69 more times. You're welcome. This level of intimacy speaks for itself. I'm going to be entangled in your wet, oh so irresistible words, our escapade in the rain. I turn to liquid from your touch as I anoint myself in your holy water. Breath held, just in case. My cat has her tongue. I'm going to be entangled in your wet, so irresistible words 60 more, 69 more times <laughs> to satisfy me utterly and completely. And then I will die smiling sweetly. <laughs> Is this the last line of every poem? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that, I thought, I'm like, this is the last <laughs> line. <Yes>! Almost. <laughs> Because I was trying to, you know, to have it make sense, I might have had to either leave one or two out, or like I had to change one of the words in one of them. But no, for, it's beautiful, basically. sexy. I I only know this because I I can put the book together. I'm like, well, hold up. Now she's now I'm on to I'm on to something. I see you. Uh, I love it. I fucking love it. What a great found poem for all of the poets in this book. Like, <laughs> let's go. And we're doing a men's and them uh, erotic anthology next year. So for you sexy men's and them out there, uh, we will be uh, uh, sponsoring an anthology next year for all of you sexy motherfuckers. Uh, speaking of sexy motherfucker, a pretty provocative poet just got in the room. Yes. Um, all right, Con. All right. Let me, uh, let me grab this here. Um, next we have to the stage, Mr. Generalissimo, Mr. Uh, Mr. General, hey darling, Woo -woo. how are you? I'm still recovering from what you did to me Monday night. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, we had an amazing time. <laughs> Um, oh, to you and what you do with food, poetry, love, you are the one when it comes to just the garlic, the cayenne pepper, the prep, I mean, you break it down, we're drooling, it's beautiful, and I tried to, I, I made an attempt to, um, I wrote um, in your spirit one day, and I'm glad you were pleased by that, so, heck yes. yeah. Okay, heck so, yeah. Uh... 
I'm, I'm working on quite a few different new book projects that so one is going to be called tentatively called the heart wants what it wants um it's a book of love heartache and heartbreak and this will be one of the poems in it probably called sandbox you rake me over the coals you rake my soul over the coals like those who think they can walk over hot coals without burning the soles of their feet I learned my lesson. You let me believe our love existed in a Zen garden, a silky white Gulf of Mexico sand. Love sand sifted through my toes as I ambled aimlessly through it. I felt a warm sensation. Our Zen garden was a sandbox filled with ultra hot long lasting char charcoal covered with a layer of sand, just thick enough to hide the glowing red coals of your deception. You learned that I preferred long, soft, passionate kisses to sloppy kisses with an, with the long, with long, I'm sorry, to long, to sloppy kisses. You always woke me by tracing your index finger from my left shoulder to my wrist and kissing my cheek as you intertwined your fingers into mine then whispering good morning sunshine into my ear. You claimed the touch of your naked body against my back while I slept, revved up my rapid eye movement to dangerous speeds. You studied architecture at the University of Facades. You surrounded a shotgun shack with Greek columns and called it Parthenon. You planted dahlias in the desert rock gardens suitable only for cacti. You made a mint teaching makeup tutorials on how to put lipstick on pigs. In the end, and most likely from the beginning, every word you utter and every move you made was teaching me to lipstick myself up like baby Jane. Every time I find myself at a beach, I wear hiking boots for fear the sand might be laced with shards of deception. And I, this is a, my other, one of the other books I'm doing is a series of poems about New York. And part of that is to do poems about buildings in New York. <laughs> because I just, I lived there for, for three years and I have a lot of favorite buildings and one is the Lipstick Building. And this is called Lipstick Building. Rumor has it, the architect watched a woman putting on lipstick in a cafe as he sipped espresso. She placed the cap on the oval cylinder and sat it atop the table. It seemed to tower over the sugar packets. He noticed her lips were a rich burgundy rather than bright red. When a man arrived whom he assumed was her date, she tapped the tube of lipstick thrice on the table and placed it in her purse. That tube of lipstick became a 34 storied maroon monument to a woman whose name the architect would never learn. Thank you. Oh my God, gee, that might be one of my favorite poems. Yes, yes, yes. You know that was awesome. Do you know the lipstick building, Marissa? The lipstick building? Yeah, in New York. Yeah, the one that's like straight, but then it's like slanted. Uh, no, it's it's shaped like a tube of lipstick, and it, as it toward the top, it kind of peaks but sideways. Well, no, it, it's like they've taken the cap, the top off the tube of lipstick, exposing the lipstick. It's kind of it's got like gradations of it gets narrower at the top because it's like an open tube of lipstick. But it's but it's maroon. It's kind of really. It's a really. It's a it's an eighties building, and it's really kind of signify. It's sort of eighties. It's real eighties architecture. It's probably bigger than Jeff Bezos's dick rocket. So I mean, <laughs> we could turn it all erotic. I think we should just. Everything should just be sex, and everyone should just get over their shit. I think let's just let's go. Okay. Well, Poor let's <laughs> Let's hear some beautiful poetry from other people. <laughs> Thank you so oh. much, General. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Next I was hoping you would take the lipstick on the pig, but have it be barbecue sauce and then you put it on the spit and then like, you know, he was making yeah. some sort of like Matanza uh, style. Lit. Like I was waiting. I was it's, waiting. On, it's on 3rd Avenue between 53rd and, and 54th. It's worth, it's worth your while if you're in New well, York. It's not that far from it. Times Square. We could go. I'll be there in July. Let's go. Anyone else want to come to New York in July? Yes. Ooh, me, me. 
come on, let's go. Yes. Every, if you want to come to New York? We're going field trip to New York, but we're not going for an overnighter. This is going to be like five days. Hold on to your butts. The Southwest does New York. <laughs> we'll have to get a really big Airbnb. Yeah. Well, no, I we got people to stay with. It's we we got poets to help. We got poets to help. I mean, maybe if, if we if we do have a large enough out of town crowd, we could probably do we could probably get a room and everyone pitch in and it 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 levy the cost. Otherwise, if it's just a small group, we got poets to help. So go. Oh. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Awesome. Nick's going to be like, here, uh, I'm Nick. You can, um, I'll take two poets. My brother will take two poets. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Nick's like, your brother, you're a poet now. You're, you're, you're a brother of a poet now. <laughs> you got a house. I, I, I'm just going to straight up just tell him, be like, you're a poet now. Congratulations! Here's your here's here's two poets. We're seeking poetic asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I I sure as shit know I'm going to stay with Chris George, so it's all good. Uh, Matthew Matthew uh, will be living in New York by then. Uh, let's Ooh. go. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It there needs to be one good thing to happen. <laughs> in the next seven months please <laughs> like like if anything can happen out of this stupid pandemic i think it's that we should all be able to get together and meet each other let's go i agree i agree heck yeah yeah um lizzie it's gonna be an issue if i make it to new york and you're in san francisco no, she ain't gonna <clears throat> you know, cancel her shit. Did I read Nothing that right? Good I'm gonna, I hope it's done. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, supposed look. to run a half marathon with Joshua Kearney uh, like the same I'm week okay. as New York Poetry Fest. I know. I'm gonna, it's gonna, it, I might not. I haven't bought my ticket yet, but he really oh, wants me to, to come. Go. I know. I put a treadmill in the tent at the New York City Poetry Festival. Can you run the fucking marathon on the treadmill? That shit. I mean, it's if awesome. it's just if you need to run, Lizzie, we we will support the running. We but that do don't it. mean that you're off the mic. Like yeah. let shit fucking San Francisco. I will Lizzie. skip. I will a hundred I will say it live on Facebook now. <laughs> if you can get a treadmill while I spit. At the New York Poet Festival, I will a hundred percent skip my trip and do it. Virtually. Oh my god! Yeah, like equipment yeah. rentals all day. Let's go. Uh, okay, we'll I'm do that. Down. Yeah. Yes, but you gotta wear the tight top with the number on the boobs. Can, the can bi still, the bib. Can we still do that? Yeah, the running bib. If, can I still have water a virtual? And not like, <gasps> They probably have a virtual option. It would Joshua just wants me to run it with him, obviously in San Francisco. And I've never Joshua been to San Francisco. Come the fuck to New York? Does he not know that that's where things are happening? Yeah. He, he came, came to New York. But if you put a came. treadmill at New York Poet Fest, I'll spit my poetry while running a half marathon. Yeah. I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just fucking amazing. So be prepared for that, y'all. Yeah. All right. Um, next we have. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Fine, oh my god, it's Stephen Blaine. Yes, it's Stephen Blaine. That's who Stephen it is. is here, you guys. Coming to the mic. And then um on deck we have Chanson. So yes, all right. Stephen Blaine, take the mic, darling. I gotta spotlight oh. him. I gotta spotlight this. Thank guy. you so much. How y'all doing? <laughs> I I was wondering if genre wise, I'm I'm not quite aligned with everyone here. So I hope it's okay. Um, We're just a mixed pot. Anything yeah. you do, Stephen, is fine. Well, well, then that's different. This is this is uh, this is this week's uh, this week's work. Oh no, it's got the. Uh, right. Old Billy liked to talk some shit. Made up just about all of it Got himself into a fight with a guy Burned him twice, kissed his ass goodbye Told his mama about the thing he'd done Said to him, I cannot help you, son Judge said he'd throw away the key 
Cause when old Billy Boy cop to plea There are consequences For everything will not renew the money's tight and all the bills are due I got a bookie who I owe some green kind of friendly till it gets real mean I want to call you here I told you so you know me better than I'll ever know there are consequences for everything Politicians only play their cards When they make the news and flip the odds Mess around with people's heads and hearts Tearing everything that's good apart The preacher maybe ought to contemplate Good things don't ever come to those who wait I do my penitence every day and night But you're still gone and it just ain't right There are consequences for everything But for a long consequences. See, but that made me write the, the next line of my Everything. next erotic poem. So that was, yeah. Oh, that's good. Finally, I tied it. I, I connected with the genre somehow. I was, I'm way Beautiful. off the board. The that was great. Well, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you very good. much. Thanks for noticing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I um. Um, okay, um, so next we have to the stage, Chanson, the haiku king, you know what I mean? Um, what number are we on now, Chanson? Are you in the... 2274. Yes! You know, we got, what's the goal? Woo! I'm not sure what the goal is, but we are, um, uh, forgive me. You can go ahead, let us know. How far are you? Well, well the, goal, the goal is 11,111. Um, I'm at 22.17 right now, so I'm about 25% of the way in, um, and it only took me a year to get here, so. Let's um, go, Chanson, yes. A year and a great set of peers, ow! <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, so I have a haiku sonnet, and then I have um, four haiku. All right, five stages of grief. There's depression, acceptance, denial, anger. Then there's bargaining. I'm overwhelmed, exploring, elated, anxious. Pain's real. That's okay. I'll avoid it or get mad. True testimony. What a tumultuous cycle of life, eclipsing the moon in hiding sunshine. Um, okay. Woo! Haku. Haku. If COVID was dead, I'd surely know the feeling of toxic presence. Woo! Haku. Love notes on the lips brought forth by my love for you. Love notes were needed. Haku. Chocolate fountain, shimmering off your shoulders. Hope it smells good too. And the last one, tap your heart on screen. Make my heart leap with your voice. 
in scribble poems. Thank you. Let's go, chant on bird, everybody. Ooh, chant song. All right, chant song. Good stuff. It's getting better and better and better. Each each haiku you write. Ooh, so good. Y'all better go buy his book when it comes out. <laughs> Yeah, the, vol the volumes of haiku that are going to be in that book. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Jamie Riera, my beautiful friend from right here in Albuquerque. Oh my God, I miss you. Um. Yeah. So thanks for Woo! coming by, and hanging out with us. Uh, measly poets in our pens, and yes, all of the beauty that goes along with our sheer unhappiness but that's okay it's the holidays all right we got two more left on the list if anyone wants uh, to read in this first round you're welcome to drop your name in the list in the chat otherwise uh i'm down to uh to do a round two if anyone wants to stay for round two uh we'll, we'll do a round two all right all right all right all right Next to the stage, we have the amazing, exquisite, Miss Ting Kimlin. Hi, Hi everyone, good to see you. I am inferring that we've been doing a little bit of naughty. Is that true? It's been a naughty day. It's okay, just naughty. so then I'll go there with you then. Um, since it's probably the last chance I'll get to do Christmas poem, so I'll do Christmas poem. From Blue's Clues. Present time, present time, open the present and see what's inside. I wrap three inch wide ribbon. Maybe, baby, I will tie the sash around your stash. Your ass, a package for me. No, no, no. Instead, I shall tie a bow between my breasts, inviting you to tug and pull my rosy satin ribbon tail. Release these soft globes, perfectly molded for your palms. Ornaments to be hung, cradling the trunk of your tree. Slide a log between my warm mounds. Light, ignite the fire. <laughs> I love roasted chestnuts. Consume this gift and all that remains of Christmas is a red satin ribbon on the floor. <gasps> and I wrote one today. Um, there was a lovely ice cream shop that had a dessert called Strawberry Bond. I scream. I picked up a tasty treat, ice cream from cream, creamistry, definitely chemistry, igniting my lips are wet, my tongue longs to lick something creamy, sticky and sweet. I want my cake and eat it, one nibble, bite at a time, watch me suck the whipped cream with my lips. Slice into my strawberries with the flick of your tip. Sample my goodness, melt into me. Dig in, dive deep, consume, then spoon me. Yes, Kevin! I'm Woo! so proud of you. Woo! Yes. Oh, it's been a long way since touching tongues. <laughs> oh my God, yes. There, there's so many of us women here tonight who are in this yes, incredible so women's erotic anthology. If you had not gotten your copy yet, uh, go to like bestbettergreenbooks.com. Or if you know one of the poets who are here tonight who are in here, go buy it from them. Go bless them by buying a copy from these poets. It's meant to help people make some money. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's 
go. All right, we got one more. We it got Marianne, right? Uh, a con. And then we have our list for round two. Uh, just real quick, Marianne, before we get to you, we got generally Simo. Uh, so we're going to lead off with Poe Con. Generally Simo, Danelle, Terry Rose Jordson, Nick P, me, Chris George, Robert F, and Danelle Callahan. If anyone else would like to get on the list for round two, drop your name in the chat. Let me know. I will get you on the list. And we're going to have a good fucking time tonight. Let's go. Here we go. All right. So next to the stage, we have Miss Matter of Fact herself, Miss Marianne. Go ahead and take the mic when you're ready, though. Okay. I'm going to do a song instead of a poem. Woo! Not naughty. This one is called I Am Singing the Love and Mother's Blues. I wrote it a while ago. I am singing the love and mother's blues. I keep fighting and up to now it's been no use. I'm sad and upset that it continues. Probably no one's listened to the truth. It is sad when abuse is allowed to continue. I get angry when the victims are the ones accused. We aren't faceless, we aren't worthless, we aren't nameless. I am singing the love in mother's blues. I keep fighting enough to now it's been no use. I'm sad and upset that it continues. Only no one's listened to the truth. We aren't voiceless, we have rights to. We who are here are survivors. We are worthy of being treated better. We will not be ignored. We will keep fighting. I am singing the love and mother blues. I keep fighting enough to now it's been no use. I'm sad and upset that it continues. Probably no one's listened to the truth. Yes, Whoa, Marianne Peterson. What are you playing, love? I want to see what you're playing. Can I see your instrument? Ukulele. Uh, it's a ukulele? Oh, I'm yes. That's amazing. Oh, I love it. Do you want to share another one with us? You can as we get this list right. Go ahead, love. Yeah, I have another song here that I wrote a while ago. Music was originally piano, but uh, that kind of uh, went downhill once it got destroyed by fire. So I'm gonna try this with uh, my ukulele. It's called Please Let Be Your Valentine Girl. When I look in your eyes, I find out more about you than I knew before. Please let me be your Valentine girl. I'd like you to be my Valentine guy. When I look at you, I feel my heart going into a world. Please let me be your lover forever. Please be my Valentine guy. Please let me be your Valentine girl. Please stay with me forever. I'm so in love with you. When I look at you, I feel my heart going into a world. Please let me be your lover forever. Please be my Valentine guy. Yes, Miss Mary Ann Peterson, Miss Matter of Fact, Straight No Chaser. We love her. Yep. Yes, I love the ukulele. Thank you for bringing that in and making that part You're of your welcome. performance. You're welcome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, PoeCon has got, oh, a snap. Christy Scribbles is coming in the room, Con. So just add Christy to the end of that list because uh, she she rocked us out this afternoon and I know she's got some stuff. Uh, so we got the list going in the chat. If you would like to get on that list, let us know. We will get you on. I'm so glad we did this pop-up open mic tonight. Uh, we just we just need to do it. Chrissy Scrabbles! 
All right, uh, and Poet Khan is gonna lead us off in round two here. Just a reminder for all of you, uh, we are going to be doing New Year's Eve right here at The Word is Right. Uh, we're gonna be going from uh, coast to coast, time zone to time zone. It is going to be an amazing thing, uh, doing a show uh, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll just do an open mic for the early to betters. And then each time zone we have hosts who are going to be ringing in the new year. Um, yes, uh, Robert F., we can move you up on the list. And uh, Robert F. has to go early. So in fact, what we could do if, if everyone is okay with that, and I guess we have veto power, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, we could have PoetCon open up round two, and let's lead off with Robert F., uh, because Robert has to go, and then we will continue on down the list. I got uh, Robert F. Generalissimo, Danelle, Terry Rose Jertson, Nick Paleologos, Marissa, Chris George, E. Kemlin, and Christy Scribbles. If I missed anyone who wants to get on this open mic list, let me know. We'll get you on. Khan, you're muted. You're muted. I want to hear you. Say it louder. One more time. <laughs> Throw it into it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I want to do a tribute to one of the homies, the original 10, and um, just put this in the atmosphere for everybody. Uh, we're still dealing with this, this, this COVID thing. This is called COVID is a whole hole. We hate COVID. Let me tell you what that hole did. And from now on, we call in this hole, COVID. I hope you got time because I could spend several lifetimes telling you what that hole did. As I said before, her new name is now COVID Venita. DeVille suggested it. Cassandra is free, is free just co-signed that bill. Now it's law, effective immediately. COVID ain't faithful. Breezy told y'all several years ago, these hoes ain't loyal. Didn't you already know she a hoe? She ain't supposed to be loyal. She's spreading herself to anybody with a pulse. She and any viable hosts are now thick as thieves. She's spreading her thick and fast all while spreading herself thin. She busting it wide open, hoping for mass genocide. Swallow your pride. Anybody can catch it and die by her swift infectious hands. COVID is a whole hole. A hole nobody wants to fuck, but she surely don't give a fuck. She passed herself around anyway. And knowing our luck, we all caught the thread, the threat of being exposed. COVID is a whole hole. Better have your protection, face mask, antiseptic, disinfectant, and sanitizer, bleach bomb that hoe. How the fuck her stubborn ass ain't dead yet? We wanna go outside. We wanna stop this hide from our friends and seek solace outside. We want to party, 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 party like it's 1999 because we like to party, but it's 2021 and COVID still ain't done. So we stuck in the house, ducking and dodging that hole like a fugitive on the run, like we owe that bitch some money. But we ain't got it, because we know she about to hurt our pockets. She an expensive old broad, digging our eyes right out the orbit of our of their orbital sockets. Can we get some relief? Where is the, rep the reprieve? She giving me a headache. 
I want to leave. I want to leave. I need to leave. I need to leave, but that ain't even gonna leave. E ate this burden, this stress she bestowed upon nations that has had enough trauma for one year. COVID is a whole hole. Free agent without a pimp, she made 2020 her bitch. And she still ain't finished. She's an energizing bunny, picking up steam to keep going, keep infecting, keep killing. She hit the people with com comorbidities twice as hard. <sighs> Left overseas coordinates and countries to plant roots in our backyard. She a dirty dog. Who let this hoe out? She has to be stopped. She bringing our defenses down, bringing our morale down. Now we gotta disperse this crowd just in case she's traipsing around amongst us now. I have had it up to here with all her asymptomatic tricks and antics, this whole hiding in plain sight. And you mean to tell me she can't pull a disappearing act? Oh, smudge, bitch. She gets off on infecting millions. She gets her orgasms and forgets about all the people she laid down. It's hard to remember that many names, but she's good at remembering fuck faces because she gives the best your fuck faces. She don't play fair. She went rogue, no lazy fair. She ain't lazy. She worked her affected Southern charms around the clock. Now our government turned lazy fair, laissez fair. Can't even forget the whole if you tried. She comforted your family, comforted your family at the wake and left small rem remem remembrances in her wake. Can't even forget the whole if you tried. She comforted your family at the wake and left small remembrances in her wake. A, pave, a painful litany of lingering long-term mysterious effects like labored breathing, gaping lung problems, amputated limbs, and suffering silent sorrow. As long as we don't have a cure today, she is guaranteed a forever tomorrow. This pandemic has plagued us all, but we gotta play it safe, don't fall. We tired of COVID and her bullshit. That crafty, unpredictable bitch always got to pull shit. And I ain't here for it. Where the goons at so she can get pumped full of lead, catch two in the head, then fall prey to the bed. There's a trigger somewhere if a G will come pull it. There's a bullet somewhere with her name on it. We don't like you too much around these parts. Don't let us catch your ass after dark COVID. COVID. Stop holding our lives for ransom COVID. We got 19 reasons and then some on why you as a whole ho. It's time for you to go. You ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell up out of here, yeah. It's true, hoes need love too, but nobody is out here trying to love you. We don't love them hoes. Just ask Snoop. Those are his iconic words, not mine. We miss our friends. We miss camaraderie and all our family. Why is this? Why this hoe couldn't just let us be? We miss our friends. We miss camaraderie, uh-uh. Don't come and ride with me. We ain't simpatico. You simply gotta go. You know how the rest go. We ain't homies or best of cronies. Get your, am uh, get your amity someplace else since all you got for the world is calamity. 
you can get clapped quick like the old trick named gonorrhea. We just want you gone from here cause you messing with our Skrilla. And the economy is in the toilet. Let's not even talk about the holiday season. You spoiled it. A lot of shit just hit different. All because of you. We hate you, you dirty bitch. You went hard this year. But in 2021, we hitting back. Believe that. So don't get comfortable. Matter of fact, pack them bags, yo. Because ain't no way we turning a grimsy asshole like you into a housewife. That's that motherfucking piece. Yes! Hey! Kimberly Shaw! Right. Oh, COVID is cold. Yeah. I love yeah. that piece. Oh, That's... Yeah. Ooh, that yeah. interpret it beautifully. Well done. Yes. Uh, beautiful. That's an important poem. It's a great fucking poem. Kimberly Shaw is amazing. And Cole Khan mm. did amazing justice to that piece. Let's go. Man. Let's go. Mm. Yes. Thank y'all. So we hitting this next round. Next to the stage, we have the amazing General Lissimo. Well, wait, wait, wait. We're bringing Robert F. up because Robert F. has to go early. Yeah, so. so we're going to go Robert F., General Lissimo, Danelle, Terry Rose, Nick P., me, Chris George, E., Kellen, and Christy. If anyone else would like to get on the mic, drop your name in the chat. I will post it again in, in the chat. But yeah, let us let us know if you guys want to read round two. But Robert F., you're, you're up. Good evening. I'm Robert Fleming. I'm a writer from Delaware. I'm going to share some recent experimental uh, visual poems, which I which I wrote. The first one is called When Calculus is Enough. Derivative X or Y or XY or X squared or Y squared or X squared Y or Y squared X or integral from not love to love you i set you i derivative um, integral from love to not love you not an element of I, you and I not. Empty set, I, you. And I'll share one more visual poem. United Nations finds pedestrian driver switch equals peace. An ash quarter horse buggy buggies and a Ford Model A four wheeler wheels over orange dust and a red seat Kawasaki and silver sidecar weaves between lanes. And Adam prams a pram with two month Jane wailing. And Jill's hairless right arm swings a tan briefcase. And John jogger jogs in red striped white sweatpants. Over 200 years, pedestrians on the side 
and vehicles in the center. No more. The rules of the road bill is law. Roads will be gray cemented and sidewalks black tarred. And Jack's 33 inch haired legs walks two miles per hour. Nike step after Nike step. And Eve Motors, a white Ford F wearing a black head scarf with tail tarring the sidewalk cement. And I'm going to just end with sharing my baby picture. I must have been about maybe seven months because I'm, you know, I'm standing. And I will say good night to you in French. Bonsoir, mes amis. Bon rêve. Bonsoir, Robert, and merci. Good stuff. Amazing. Love it, love it. Mm. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Let, you got to drop your jaw when you say it. Bonsoir. You know, okay, got it. All right. All right. Woo -woo -woo. Um, Heck yeah. Thank you to everybody coming in. See you coming, uh, Tez and uh, Kim Lynn. Good night, darling. Get your rest, pull it. Is that, how do we say it? Au revoir, mes amis. Au revoir, mes amis. Mm, that's good night. Je t'aime. Love you all. Mm, beautiful. All right, good night. Good night. Je, je nécessite dormir. You know what I mean? So I gotta, okay. So, um, forgive me, uh, dang it. I don't know if this is, um, Marissa, can you, can you introduce who's next, darling? Forgive me. Okay, I so I way. got generally smell Brian Franco is up next and then on deck is Danelle Callahan. Oh, this is right. Okay. Bam. All right. Woo. -hoo. Okay. This story has to be told. She was my prom date's mom. When I was in college once, when I visited Mobile, she invited me for lunch. Her West Indies crab salad was beyond reproach. The bite of the vinegar, the sharpness of the onions, and the sweet, fresh Gulf of Mexico crab meat was a true Southern delicacy. She joked that she always secretly hoped I'd marry her daughter. I didn't have the heart to tell her I was homosexual and so was her daughter. I was 48 when I came to town after my mother died to go through my mom's belongings with my brothers. She was a widow, a retired, respected cardiologist. My mom's neighbor told me she wanted to say hello. It had been decades. I know you aren't getting any West Indies salad up there in Maine. I went to her home for lunch. She offered me sun tea with fresh mint from her herb garden. It was a humid, 84 degree Alabama day. The ice cold tea slid down my throat and the mentiness was like a breath of fresh mountain air. When I woke, I was naked. My arms and legs were splayed wide, tied with a double knotted, with double knotted black nylon to the brass bedposts. I had a painful erection. She had just injected my penis with a scary hypodermic needle filled with I don't know what. She was wearing a very prostitutish looking piece of red fancy lingerie. She squatted over me when one of her saggy breasts had fallen out to the side. Then as she lowered to mount me, she said, don't worry, Hannibon, I can't get pregnant. Um, then I'll just do one more, but that didn't offend anyone. <laughs> the aftermath of you. I was head over heels since day one, the first second, and you forced my heels over my head and made me think I was some sort of contortionist. You distorted truths and twisted facts into shapes and forms that couldn't be twisted back. All my words became a jumbled into an incomprehensible stew when everything I said was perfectly clear before the aftermath of you. You hit me like a hurricane earthquake and tidal wave all at once. The debris you left behind has blocked my sun. I don't want to clean it up so no one strips me of my soul and history won't repeat itself. 
Life will be easier with my heart hidden behind some dusty storm candles on the utility room shelf. I try to love, I try to trust. Our history has accrued. I try to not make excuses, but I make excuse after excuse in the aftermath of you. And you're a storm I wouldn't wish on anyone, but you've disappeared into thin air and I know you'll reappear somewhere. I feel guilty, helpless, and blue because I know there is only aftermath after the aftermath of you. Thank you. Oh man, gee. Ah. Uh. Wow. Gonna release him. The aftermath of you, man. <sighs> That was amazing. Yeah, man. Hmm. All right, just breathe on that for a minute. Um, thank you so much for that, General, um, for the vulnerability in the room tonight, guys. Thank y'all for this moment with y'all. This is beautiful. Um, next to the stage, we have Miss Danielle Callahan. Callahan, just should have stuck with the first name. Did I get it right? Anyway. <laughs> you I don't want my trouble. <laughs> Take the mic, <back>, though. <laughs> yes, you 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 have it right. Um, uh, so I'm going to tell a little story uh, for Marissa because she requested it. It's a uh, audience participation poem. So when I say certain words and point to the screen, then basically you can unmute your mics and say those words. Wait, 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 should we, should we preface this with, uh, should we preface this with like, um, with, um, with, with, a, with a quick, with a quick story? Yeah, I was going to tell uh, the story. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're, all I'm right. just, I'm just, oh, I'm I mean, just I'm, I'm not gonna, I won't tell the story, but I will just, I will, it's a prequel to her story. So you guys have context for this. So we were all in yeah. a Zoom workshop, right? We're in a Zoom workshop. I'm leading the Zoom workshop and this dude comes in and we'll let her tell the story, but we weren't sure about this dude. And you know, when you're wondering if you're going to get bombed on Zoom, Damn. That is how this whole thing came about. There's a group of poets in a Zoom room. And so so y'all y'all don't think that this just came out of nowhere. This is a true story really happened. All right, you know. <laughs> so this is in the style of Beverly Hillbillies. You know that the song Beverly Hillbillies, the, the song, well, here's a little story about a man named Okay, so from that old old TV show. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the legend of Juan Pants. <sighs> well, here's a little story about a man you ought to know and a little less about the parts he'd probably like to show. But as he lives on in guerrilla poets infamy, listen up for a tale of Juan Pants and me. Juan Pants. Juan Pants. Juan Pants! Juan Pants! Juan Pants! Juan Pants! <laughs> well, there we were gathered, poets in the plague, gathered in a room, well, you know it was a Zoom, sharing of our written work and trading accolades, then suddenly in the waiting area, along he came, Juan Pants, I mean, heck, that's the point of the tale, you see, Juan Pants. Juan, Juan Pants! Pants! Well, Marissa asked, uh, if any of us do know of this man in the waiting place and each of us hollered, no. 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 Hell no. <laughs> Shane looked puzzled and she did start to chuckle. Someone suggested we should all change our handles. And pretty soon the room was filled with pants. Wand pants. Wand pants. Wand pants. Wand pants. Then we as welcoming poets opened up the door and the original Juan Pants entered and soon saw the namesake adore. Courteous as always, we told Juan he had the floor. He said nothing aloud, but typed in the chat, can I please show y'all my pants? A Juan Pants. Juan Pants. Juan Pants. <laughs> <laughs> 
politely refusing this amusing show, we asked if we knew him or he would have to go. Sadly struck dumb to refuse to see his slacks, we showed Juan the door without seeing his dungarees, bloomers, knickers, pantaloons even, a Juan pants. A Juan oh, pants. pants. Oh, Juan pants. <laughs> Now just remember my tale the next time you're in a Zoom and Juan Pants wants to join your group's synergy. Instead of a cord, he'll likely show his trousers and any serpentine animal that may dwell beneath. A Juan Pants. 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 That's the legend of Juan Pants, folks. Juan Pants. Long pants. Yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> That's the oh legend. Yeah. It's totally fucking true because the guy, his name was Swan Pants. And so I'm like talking to the group of poets and I'm like, dude, there's someone in the waiting room named Juan Pants. So we all change our name to Juan Pants. So when I so let it, it the group of poets, we were all pants. <laughs> and so the Zoom bomber got bombed. He got bombed. We, we, clever as well. us your pants. we reverse bombed and the bomber. It was so fucking funny. Oh my God. Maybe you had you to be it. there. I don't know. But like, be careful which room you roll up in Zoom bombers. Yeah. Because <laughs> we ran. <laughs> Oh my god. Emma is in the room. You my pants. I am yeah. back again is here. Arlene is here. Oh my god. Mr. Tezza Zolmok is here. We are just having a great fucking time tonight. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. yeah, Emma, if you wind up staying, then I'll read your poem to you again, my dear. Uh if you want to read, you're welcome to read anyone who wants to get on the list. Uh Juan Pants. So yeah, whenever I'm in a, in a workshop with Danelle and I'm like, Juan Pants! Juan Pants? Uh, it's automatic echo. <laughs> it's just so great. It's just, I love how we turn a situation that could be detrimental into just bliss. I love us. Okay. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah. Shout out to everybody in the building. Thank you for the, the people that are just hanging out, giving us audience work tonight. We appreciate you um sometimes we just want to be held we just want to be with the poets you know so thank you for that for just kicking it with us tonight um next to the stage we have my honey darling terry rose Jensen. can i share screen yeah it's enabled okay so i i wrote this tonight before I got in here and it was, can you turn this down? <laughs> and it was to a prompt, today was a fairy tale. So today was a fairy tale. If your story includes COVID, super spreaders who refuse to get vaxxed and no sign of intelligent life anywhere, today was a fairy tale, twisted characters with no redeeming qualities that allow darkness to overtake the light, stifling out any glimpse of hope. So that was not very uplifting, but <laughs> that's where I was at earlier. And then I have another one I can find that's a little bit more uplifting. Um, I actually have this one that is kind of interesting. This one I did a while ago, with the, I did that drawing and that was actually supposed to be an angel, but I kind of put my face on it. So I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit hard to read. So when I was young, was the closest I ever felt to God, but even the angels were, it's hard to read, disobedient and had sex with God's holy, creation and created a mutation of giants 
I forget where I read this, but God was not pleased and eventually flooded the earth to wash away the mistakes and start over. But God did not make mistakes. We do. Those angels were damned to hell. People tend to forget this when they worship them. So that's the picture. And I'm going to do one more short one with another picture. Uh, I like this one. It's kind of melancholy, but in a good way. What is closure? If I have it, then why do I still feel this heaviness anchor tied around my neck? Does it make you feel any better? Is it parting ways with no goodbyes? Or is it kicking and screaming your name through hot tear-stained cheeks? Is this why I return to the beach time and time again? hoping to see you in your angelic form, resurrect yourself from your watery grave. Either way, another chapter of life has been concluded, diluted, summarized, with or without your approval. Will we ever see each other again? Will we ever mean that much to each other again? Sometimes the aching in my heart tells me there's still a chance. If not in this life, then maybe the next. Man, Terry Good. Rose. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, Terry. Good stuff. Incredible. Get Thank the you. Book, like There's so many women in this book in the book. That touched me, man. Too. And for the men's and them who want to be in the 2022 one, like, put your poems together. Put your poems together. You do not want to be the one left out of this book and being like, damn, how come I wasn't in that book? Just get your ass in the book. Get in the book. Get in hey. the book. You know, um, one thing I know about love is love will challenge your understanding of time in space when you've had love of a parent or whoever um you know you 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 tend to to i want to say bevel i don't know if that's the right word but deal in the idea of an afterlife of seeing this loved one again you know um love reminds you that you are eternal is what i'm trying to get at so that was beautiful terry <laughs> came and pow me in the chest real quick <laughs> um yeah it's <laughs> expected i'm for it <laughs> uh, yeah okay so next to the stage we have nick paleo locos i'm just enjoying saying your last name at this point okay heck yeah lovey if you're here woo, yes thank i'm you. here hey, hey darling hey what's going on it's a very enjoyable last name i enjoy that last name for quite a long time bro ever yeah, I love that every year. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, BoldCon. Y'all are awesome. All right, so let's get to it. So I'm going to give y'all... Let me pull something. Hold on. Something from the original time. I'm going to pull something out from the next 10. So here's the book. Schoolyard Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions. Tori Lutz's book. And this poem right here spoke to me on a level. So I hope y'all enjoy it. It's titled Suffocating. Breathe in. Breathe out. On a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling today? One, meaning one foot in the grave and the other barely grabbing the edge. 10, meaning tenacious, vivacious, and every other aceous that you can then describe how you elated you are. Maybe you're feeling a five if you're just doing fine. There is no right answer, of course, unless you consider anything below a four, the right answer. Four, because we care for you. 
and can't let anything bad happen. So let's lock that shit down before it becomes a problem. Because we can't have you, I mean you, I mean your brain shutting down on us now. But answer honestly, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling today? No pressure, but you aren't the only one with problems. And we need to know how serious this can be before we can move on, move on. Can you say at least a 6? Sorry? Sick of this? No, at least a six. I'll just jot down a seven if it's all the same to you then. You look chipper enough today. Keep that head up. We all know what happened when you reached a two. A two isn't too fucking bad. You've got shit to do. I think we should aim for an eight by tomorrow. If you eight by four tomorrow, we could even put a nine, but I'm not sure you're there yet, and it's asinine to shoot too high, so how about that seven again? What? Three? That won't do, you see. This has to be documented, prioritized, considered a problem. Other people have real problems, can't you see? We don't have time for a crisis. If you're gonna fuck up, at least do it right. Breathe in. Breathe out. All right. Let that breathe for a second. That poem is such a powerful poem right there. Wow. And that... Wow. Wow. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I gave you all one more. And I haven't done this one in a while. And I'm going to see if I have this one memorized. I've been trying to memorize my poems. So, let me see if I have this one memorized. Fettel Welcome Home. Home is not a structure. It isn't a place to carve condos out of wood and gravel or mansions out of castles. It is a haven away from attacking ravens that are ravenous to suck you dry to the last drop of bone marrow. A place to retreat from defeat and mend your broken arrows. A place to celebrate your victories, to sing praise, bask in benevolent beats and beauty. Home was taken away from me in 2020. I had to find a new shelter. It was a water fronting, breaking, opening my third eye, tearing tears out of the cornea down to the earth to see beyond towns, homes, and lands to understand elegance. It's more than a year later, more than than 200 poems written, been a host on nine different platforms. I brought more substance to the talented table I break bread with. It was never about the food or drinks. It's about the stories and memories. I'm not afraid to wear my scars like tattoos. I'm not afraid of censoring myself. I'm not afraid to call multiple places primary residences. Home is where the music sings without instruments and instructions. Home is where the words wrap around the mind and kiss the ears. Home is where the mic is filled from case to screen with music, comedy, and poetry. Home is friends. Friends become family. Family is forever. No matter how far away we all are. That's that piece right there. God damn, Nick Paley, a logos, everyone. Oh, Get his book. Oh, he runs Poetry Night with Nick P, the first and third uh, Wednesday night here at Word is Right. Let's go. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Woo! Wow. Mm. Hey, man. What we do is spectacular, y'all. Y'all already know, man. <laughs> and a lot of us, I'm writing these poems about poets being family because it's true. It's not just cute. It's not just a nice a bar and a poem. Bars, drop the mic. It's true. It's family. So damn it, Nick. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Let me get me together. Thank you, everyone. You all are awesome. Heck yeah, I love. All right, next to the stage. We have Marissa Darling. And on deck, we have Chris George. So since we, I was gonna do a sexy one, but um, Emma is here. I still think this is super sexy. This is the poem that I wrote 
to Emma during our Instagram live today. Uh, so Poe Khan has heard it already, but sh she's here. She's here all the way from uh, seven hours in front of us. And uh, uh, there's no better way I can celebrate my beautiful friend than to um, read the poem that I wrote about her today. Uh, so Emma, this one is for you. And I will find a way, I will find a way to inscribe this on something and send it to you. Okay. <sighs> it is real. <laughs> yes. All right, baby girl, here we go. I'm back again. Emma. I imagine you smell like me because you fall fast asleep beside me between my breasts next to my heartstrings, Emma. I imagine you taste like me. I can drink a case of your yummy since you are always at the tip of my tongue, the edge of my lips, hips, nipples, Emma. I imagine you come like me. Your fingertips on my clit enter me. Feel me, surfer girl, wave saving every heartbeat further from heartbreak, Emma. Heal this female need to be a T E E tongue trainer for personal use, internal use only. You can fill this hole. Don't need a dick to be whole, Emma. Pull my hair the way I imagine. Smoke me like your paper doll. Play with my nipples as you rip apart my shirt. Hang on and off the handlebars of my imaginative lace thong. Emma, lick me until your tongue quits. Mouth kegels bruise me. Makers mark, mark me, Emma, with an E for ecstasy. Every night you're between my legs, E for every, give me every day and night and kiss and cuddle and slap and fuck and smile and word, then pen me to you where together we become one thank you wow uh, i love you so much. Hey. i love you <laughs> the, the dusty parts that are left amazing dishes that are not washed i love you so much i just shout I out to emma in the it. building <laughs> shout out to poet love <sighs> I think women heal women so much better. Like there ha there's a way, <laughs> there is a way that we just don't hurt each other more. And I think that, that I found my fucking family and my people who will make sure I don't hurt anymore. <laughs> it's beautiful. So it's, fucking it's that, thank you, ladies. That ATE -E power, damn it. <laughs> you know what's so crazy i was in clubhouse tonight celebrating a poet's birthday and there was a poet in there talking about people being addicted to them and you know and kind of just like playful and how how we were and it's because it's true um people can you know you're just sensational and um yeah so be ready for that <laughs> yeah i think that yeah i think the women just you know we get it and <laughs> there's eventually comes a point in our lives where we say enough is enough and uh we <laughs> at the end of the day we only have each other and and we would we, never hurt each other uh so i'm okay with that i'm okay with that i hear you love me heck yeah thank you so much for that peace marissa i love you emma Um, all right, so next we have to the stage, Mr. Chris George, and on deck we have 
uh, E. Mackler. Hi there, sir. How you doing? Okay, let me uh, find my right file here. Okay. Uh, Robert E. showed a uh, picture of him uh, as a child. This is me, age five, uh, on uh, on Douglas Head, Isle of Man, June 1953. This was two years before my family and I uh, all moved to the United States in 1955. And the Isle of Man is located, as you can see, right between England and Ireland. And that's where my uh, paternal grandmother lived. And uh, this is my uh, mother and myself on Laxing Beach. Uh, my grandmother, grandma lived in an old schoolhouse. Uh, and that's me on the steps leading up to the old schoolhouse where she lived. Um, and this is her, and she seemed very old to me at the time. But what I wasn't aware of is what I have found more recently that uh, she was actually born in 1876. So she was actually 21 years older than my maternal grandmother. And I've tried to write a poem about this and I'm working on. Uh, Julian Matthews uh, wrote a poem uh, referencing the double T in his name, Matthews. So this is a, a poem I'm working on. The Georges and the Matchets. I liked more the matchets, my maternal grandparents, than starchy, distant Grandma George. I had more fun with Nana and Grandad Matchett on Egbert Hall Avenue and leafy Mossley Hill, Liverpool, than with wizened old Grandma in that cold, dank former schoolhouse on the heathery hill overlooking Laxey Bay on the Isle of Man. Although I liked her little blind dog, Smotty, and her three tabby cats, not, I think, tailless Manx cats. I preferred Nana and Grandad Matchett's Inwood. It was my double T ranch, my home home on the Grange. And this is uh, one of the Isle of Man boats that uh, plied between uh, Liverpool and the Isle of Man that I was on. This is an earlier one in the early uh, 20th century. This one was the SS Mona's Isle. And there's a song about the loss of one of the uh, boats, the uh, Ellen Bannon. Snave fell, tin wool, ben a cree. Fourteen ships had sailed the sea. Proudly buried a Manx name. Uh, but there's one will never again. Oh, Ellen Bannon of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, Ellen Bannon lost in the Irish Sea. At 1 a.m. in Ramsey Bay, Captain Tear was heard to say, Our contract said deliver the mail. In this rough weather, we must not fail. Oh, well, and then of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, well, and then lost in the Irish Sea. Ocean liners sheltered from the storm. Ellen Bannon on the wave was born. Her hold was full and battened down. As she sailed towards far Liverpool town. Oh, Ellen Bannon of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, Ellen Bannon lost in the Irish Sea. With her crew of 21 Manx men, her passengers, Liverpool businessmen. Farewell, Mona's Isle, farewell. This little ship was bound for hell. Oh, Ellen Bannon of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, Ellen Bannon lost in the Irish Sea. Less than a mile from the bar light ship by a mighty wave, Ellen Bannon was hit. 
She sank in the waters of Liverpool Bay, and there she lies until this day. Oh, Ellen Bannon of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, Ellen Bannon lost in the Irish Sea. Few Manx men now remember the third day of the month's December, the terrible storm in 1909. Ellen Bannon sailed for the very last time. Oh, Ellen Bannon of the Isle of Man Company. Oh, Ellen Bannon lost in the Irish Sea. Uh, this is one of the wrecks in Liverpool Bay, and uh, it's probably not Ellen Bannon. In fact, uh, as we sailed into Liverpool, a lot of these vessels that you see were probably lost during the war. Uh, but I thought you might like to see that image. Thank you. Oh, man. Woo! Chris George is amazing. Oh yes. my God! You know what? We should set you up to be the one, one a one poet show. Uh, I would love an entire hour of just Chris George. Um, yes, yes, and yes. If I you ever want to, if you want to do that, Chris George, just let me know. Uh, yeah. Kemlin is gonna uh, launch that. Uh, it's a ticketed event. Uh, it's like five bucks. It's a very inexpensive, but it's an entire hour of being immersed with an artist and mm. their work uh, through screen share, through sound share, through you know Q and A sections throughout the the. I mean, it's just so much fun. And, yeah, I, I like that. Okay. All right. Yes. Because uh, we have all these dates. We have all these these Fridays, which are not being used, that are open uh, in 2022. And then we have all of these uh, fifth days of the week uh, that uh, are open that, that I'm like, it's it's to me, it's a, it's a missed opportunity if we're not filling all of these spots. So, I mean, look at tonight. Tonight, there was nothing planned and word is right. And we have been at, at 17 to 20 people the entire night. Uh, it's because people need poets, people need poetry and music and they need community. Um, so yes, Chris George, I would love to have you for a whole, for a whole night. <laughs> that sounds about. <laughs> Listen, I could just keep going on and on. You, you, I, I might not stop. I love to see the pictures of you and your little, like, my oh my. Do you guys ever wonder what, what everyone looked like when they were little? Uh, I, I definitely thought it might be fun to do, like, uh, you know, bring your baby picture and then try to match it with the poet. And, uh, oh, my God, that would be so much fun. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weird, weird dork. So it's a poet kind of thing. Um, guess the poet. I would love that uh, do stuff like that. The history of people yeah. and where they come from, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's amazing to me. Uh, and you look so adorable. And then I felt guilty. I was like, "Damn, he was really cute then. He's really cute now." And I felt so guilty about that. <laughs> and so I'm like, "Damn!" And I gotta like not feel some sort of way that same Chris George smile is like there from when he was little. I love that. I mean, part of that is the mom in me. Part of that is is the woman. Part of it's the poet. Uh, we just see people differently when we look at them from when they were little. Mm -hmm. um, not in a creepy way guys don't think it's fucking it's not in a creepy way okay it's love it's love Jeez. <laughs> it's like in a love in a life love kind of way um it's how you see your fellow man uh but yeah i would love to see you know aj houston is another poet who i would love to do a one poet show i mean there's damn it there's so many fresh linen man can you imagine fresh linen doing a one post show i gotta talk to him and see if he wants to do a one post show uh he, he's been very busy with his his baby but his baby should be big enough now he do a one post show i'll talk to fresh and oh my god con did you see he and his wife posted fresh linen and his wife posted um pictures of their slippers and guess what I have the same fucking ah! slippers. <laughs> this is Mama Bear, and I got I got little bears for my daughters, and yes. I got bears. little bears for my team too, for my youngest. Yes, yes. They made like that. Ah, what so so uh, Fresh has Papa Bear, 
and his wife has mama bear and their baby has the big bear one. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. Uh, poets, we all vibe on the same wavelength. It's just, we just do. Let's so go. Good to vibe. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. So next we have to the stage, Mr. E. Hello. Hey. Hey. Oh. We are ready for you. You take your time. Do your thing. All right. I was wondering, do you have uh, split screen capabilities? Uh, okay. So I have share screen, but I'm not sure about split screen. It'll, it'll let me let multiple participants share. So you have the ability to, uh, uh, to, to share screen. Um, I, I don't know, I don't think you can split screen, but if you pull up whatever's on your desktop and make it big, uh, then you can just hit share screen and we'll see what you're seeing. Um, whenever I do share screen, I tend to, it tends to mess up my laptop and then I have to restart. So I, uh, do you want me to pull something up or do you want to drop something in the chat that I can pull up and I can screen share for you? Oh, no, I, I meant I wanted to, I was, well, I was going to ask if uh, you wanted to, to read something and I back you up on this. Oh, so oh, maybe yeah. like the means to put to have you and him. Right. I'm not, exactly. I'm not sure what they call that. But we did it the other night at B. Um, I'm not sure how to do it. Okay, so ground. you want you want something from me or something from any other? Uh, uh, from you, if 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 you're up for it. If not, that's that's okay. cool. Okay. <laughs> you want um uh okay. Uh, I have lots of different things. Do you want something sexy? Do you want something dark? Uh, oh. Uh, if you like Rolling Stones, I did a Rolling Stones tribute poem uh, titled Painted Black, uh, oh. which is awesome. And you could probably tap into your inner Rolling Stones if you want. Okay, we could do that. Um, so what I was thinking, of, I'll do a quick little opening thing. I'll cue you and then you start and then I'll follow you. Okay. All right. This is an experiment. Um, I realize there's a delay. Uh, there's a time delay. It's only because I was pulling up that poem. That's why. Uh, right. But yes, go ahead. Okay. Shelter from the love in vain I wait in vain for. Around and around, I am a fool to cry these far away eyes, for this out of time thought will not fade away. Only cry to me for an emotional rescue. So worried about you and your heart of stone. Give me shelter from these torn and frayed days. You drift away, gotta get away. Can't take the flight 505, cause our deep love don't stop. And somehow that's not what you want. So paint it black. Paint it all black in the aftermath of you, sweet black angel hand of fate. Humbling dice, loving cup of brown sugars, satisfaction, prodigal son, street fighting, sensei man. Still, time is on my side to ride on. Baby, shine a light on them. Paint it black. Let's spend the night together, then paint it black. I want to be loved back then. Connection like a rolling stone, headstone, goodbye. 
bike for a letter in hand, monkey man twist the towel of hate and let it bleed black. My life spent finding you, just you fool, then paint it black, paint it all back in time with the whip down. Wild horses will play with fire under cover of the night. Don't cry for this child of the moon. Honky tonk woman, she's the rainbow, was a rainbow. Midnight rambler walking with miles. Solo journey of no expectations under my thumb. Before they make me run, stay in it's only rock and roll anyway. So we'll find you a factory girl, backstreet girl all along. About you, girl. She was hot enough to rip this joint connection. Some girls like it hot, like it loose, a little T and A. Or me and your memory, hotel high and dry. Just the way you left me, I'm all pulled out of crap scribbles used to immortalize you from my imagination. I don't know why I can't quit you. Read the spell of you. Ruby Tuesday Revolution, rough justice, rodeo, clowning, jigsaw, puzzle of it, complicated, so get off my cloud. Version of that here. You, me. Both <laughs> you, you both owe me. You both owe me about Man, 10 oh, miles. Right. Oh my and god. 20 miles. <laughs> the power that was awesome. of just right in this fucking moment. Like you guys were crescendoing together. He was going with you, and oh, it was. I'm not over it. I'm not. Get what you want. But you get what you need, damn it. Heck yeah, yeah, y'all. All right, a, come back. It's a fucking, I love that. I, I got to do more, 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 more band poems. Like, <sighs> thanks for doing that on the fly, Marissa. I really appreciate it. No, I'm so glad. When you told me, you're like, you want to do it? I was like, are you talking about anyone? <laughs> and I'm like, well, shit. I mean, I got this Rolling Stones poem. Uh, no, thank you for asking me to do it with you. Um, it has the right to me. It has the right amount of salt. In it. <laughs> oh, it was everything. It was everything. 
It was everything. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It's the Mac Mackler man. Oh man. It's a it's a bass. Yeah. And on the video, I'm kind of harmonizing with y'all, just giving some. Mm, yeah, if you ever wanted to, like, if you want to put out, oh. a, put out, put out a, a track of that, I, I'm down. Let's go. Uh. <laughs> that was just all right. Let me come back. Okay, thank you so much. See, this was yeah. This is the magic. We are amongst the magic. Next, we have to the stage, Miss Christy. Come on in here, darling. Hey, darling. Oh, following that, like at one point, Marissa's just flowing and my whole world seems to slow down. I was like, am I tripping? Like, what is <sighs> happening? I can't understand what's going on. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It was just remarkable. Well, this is the poem that wanted to come through, so I'm going to read it, but it's hard to after that. Um, I wrote this for a magazine, they didn't want it, and so I never really opened it again, and tonight it jumped out at me, so this is what, <clears throat> this is it. Defunct. We are defunct. Defunct in the ways in which we see each other, in which we see our world, in which we understand it, understand her, our relationship with her, how we walk on top of her, we thrive because of her, because of what she has, how she is, how she holds, holds what holds us. She holds us, she feeds us, she waters us. Defunct is in the way in which we avoid her and ignore her, we ghost her, lead her to believe that we care about her when we don't, we can't, we can't even see her, see her dying, see her depleted, see her suffering, hear her call to us, text us, follow us, follow us down that road of weariness, of wondering, of wasting, wasting it all, wanting it all, wrecking it all, wrecking her in our defunct ways, the ways of the old, the blinded ways in which we consume and produce and leech off of her. Why can't we see her and feel her and help her? She gives and she gives and she gives. We take and we take and we take and sit upon her and breathe her in and drink her and abuse her. We are the abuser. You would never let your sister date you, date us, date humanity. You would never want humanity at your house, dating your daughter, eating your food, drinking your water, littering your trash, but she does. She is. She allows. Allows us, L-I-F-E and allows us breath, allows the abuse, allows it because of the mother inside of her, the giver that she is, the protector that she is, the abuse that she is. By us, by our defunct ways in which we consume and which we protect her, in which we abuse her, in which we don't save her. Why can't we save her? Why can't we see her? Why can't we notice her in all the ways in which she gives, in all the ways in which she supports, in all the ways in which she allows, allows us to live. She allows us to L-I-V-E, can't breathe without her, can't eat without her, survive without her. Yet we keep hitting and yelling and taking. We keep gaslighting her and depleting her and avoiding her. The avoidance so clear, so stark, so toxic. The toxicity oozes from our every pore, from our every factory, from our every pesticide. It oozes from us all and it poisons her. Our M-O-T-H-E-R. We poison our mother. We poison ourselves. We poison our lives. Defunct we are all. Defunct is the relationship. Defunct is the cycle and the ways in which we connect with her. Our mother, our planet, our source ourselves, our O-N-E, our one, living together symbiotically in rhythm and motion together as family. We are her children. It is us, up to us to help her. We can help her, we can do it, we can break it. Let's break it, the cycle, the circle, the neglect, the abuse, and let's connect with her. Let's find her, find our footing as we walk on top of her, speak with her and ask for forgiveness and tell her we see her and love her and we will change for her. We can reach out, we can call her. 
She calls us all the time just to say hi, just text her, hang with her, change for her, change for us. We can change for her, our mother, the one that feeds the one that fills, the one that forgives. Ask for that forgiveness. Ask for the fresh start and change the defunct, funky ways of our normal, of our ignoring, of our poisoning. Let's defunct the funk and help her and call her and change for her. Our mother needs us. Please see her, please put her first. She deserves that to be put first, to be thought of first, to be saved first. She saves us. She rescues us. Now we can save her. Let's save her because we are her. We are H-E-R. Save her to save us because she is and does and always will be our mother. Thank you. Oh my God. Christy's Yes. Oh, if you're not following this, follow this motherfucker. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, a series of uh, self-love workshops with Gorilla Poets. I'll do one in uh, January, one in February, one in March. Uh, I am using, uh, I, I can't say I'm using, uh, in cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> in cooperation with Christy Scribbles in her artwork, I'm featuring her in my very first self-love workshop with Gorilla Poets because she has this amazing self-love poetry uh, and it is going to be the prompt in which we all write a self-love poem from. So uh, please, please follow this poet. Uh, follow us, of course, here at Word is Right, Gorilla Poets, like we got a lot of shit coming down the pipe in 2022. Fuck 2021, 2022 is a game changer. Uh, Christy Scribbles is, is definitely gonna be part of that. I'm just fucking glad I met these IG poets, right, Erica? I'm like. <sighs> Love y'all. It's what you call home. It's what you call home right here. Up next to this mic, we have Thomas Connor. What up, y'all? Everybody Ooh. was amazing tonight. I don't know if I can follow all of that, but I'm going to try. <laughs> None of us can try. do. We don't work flip-flops the way you do. It's fine. <laughs> Man, <laughs> do I regret ever spitting that poem? Who said anything about that? that? Unless they hang out here for a minute. <laughs> so that's your claim to fame. It's okay, Thomas. Uh, yeah, yeah. I took down the video, by the way, so nobody knows anything anymore except those that talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yay! It can be urban legend. Yes. Now it can. We can. We can really talk about it now. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. <clears throat> this one is for mommy. I've been writing a lot of poems about mom and home, so it's in Spanish. Trigger warning. I don't know if that's a trigger warning, but it's in Spanish, so. Um, it's to honor her. She always said, you, you never really write poetry in Spanish. So, you know, uh, I do this for her. Um, I do this for her. La lluvia corriendo como las memorias, hecho en el pasado de mi juventud, lleno en el olor de ajo y azafrán, el toque de su mano, acento catracho, mami la primera estrella de su hogar, siempre vestida catrín. Cuerpo con curvas, mente y cara de joven. Costurera, su oficio. Robert Hall, su oficina. Todavía recuerdo el autobús. Lleno de gente y aliento. Cuerpos empañando la ventana. Graham Avenue, six miles away. La botánica, once her iglesia. Filled with unknown saints. Graffiti corners with cats and boom baps and boom box and who rocks the Scooby-Doo type shit. Doña Toña, my mother's third floor sage. Her apartment scent of recado. My tongue still yearning for café y galletas. Mami en la cocina con bochinche. Yo viendo el televisión. Walter Mercado on the screen, saludando con paz y un poco de amor. Igual como el toca de mami que hace tres años que murió, pero ella siempre vive en mi corazón. En poem. Oh my God. 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 Oh my God.
my god, Thomas. <gasps> Thomas! <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God. And Th Thomas Connor uh, was one of our, our final features of 2021. So thank you for fucking sending 2021 out in a blaze of glory because um, shut down in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we should fucking write that poem, E. Uh, yes. Uh, I shoot your dick down in a blaze of glory. Uh, glory hole, motherfucking dig down in the blaze of glory holes. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> you erotic poets know what the fuck I'm talking about. The rest of you will tell you when you're older. Uh, but yes, if we. <laughs> we'll call you you yes, when you're ready. <laughs> right, right. Just when you think you're ready, you ain't ready. I'm just saying, <laughs> no one's ready. You come on here, you got me ready. Um, so yes, there there really is, uh, there's, so tomorrow I will be on Instagram tomorrow afternoon, uh, tomorrow late morning, early afternoon, my time uh, doing a live open mic. And then Friday, we have Feel Good Friday in the morning uh, where I will be reading uh, books from other poets uh, and, and, and doing an open mic and that'll be Instagram. And then of course, Friday night is our, uh, new year's Eve party. Please come. It's a free fucking festive celebration. We're going to be, uh, partnering with Grapevine Sway, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the lovely Instagram poets. Nick, did you, was that a hand raise? Like, yeah. Yes. I had a question actually for Thursday. What time is it Thursday? So my Instagram every Thursday is uh, between 10 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. I start Mountain Standard Time. So it's between 12 and 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is about the time we start the show every Thursday. Friday, the same thing. Uh, Emma, I'm back again, who is here tonight, who is the subject, the muse, the goddess divine of my poetry. Uh, she is here tonight. She will be co-hosting with me on Friday because it will be fucking midnight seven hours before it'll be midnight for us. <laughs> so, so we're going to uh, make out uh, virtually and pop the pussy, I mean the, the champagne, um, pop the pink bubbly champagne. That was not a, this is not a Freudian slip. Uh, but yes, uh, we will celebrate with her earlier in the day, and then we will continue our marathon of just New Year's, because you know what? Fuck 2021. Fuck all the drama. Fuck all the shit. We got, you know what? We got some important things to do in 2022, y'all. Uh, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. We got some important things to do, and that's going to be our focus. So if anyone wants to come and hang out with us on New Year's Eve, please do. We're going to start at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I realize that is before midnight. I know. But there's a whole spectrum of people who are not going to stay up late. Uh, so we want to catch all of those people early on. And then we're going to drop the ball every time zone in the U.S. Now, in 2022, we have big plans to break the Guinness Book of World Records of longest open mic. And I wanna go from Mountain Standard Time to Mountain Standard Time. I wanna do 24 hours of open mic. So uh, we have big plans. <laughs> <laughs> we got some shit going on okay <laughs> y'all want to be part of that great let's go be stamp your ticket get on the train <laughs> because yeah, things have changed man. drastically in covid the longest running open mic let's go 20 24 hour open mic every single hour in every time zone um yeah uh, let's go got shit to do next year we ain't, we ain't dealing with no losers and we ain't oh. de dealing with no liars. So. None. What the hell is it? I'm so sorry. 
We're gonna have a good time next year. But come, please, come next. Come to the New Year's Eve party. Come and just be around poets and love love on poets and let us love on you. Let us inspire you. Dump all your shit. Dump it all, right? Just dump it all. Do not carry it into next year. I used to tell people when I had an office, like a brick and mortar office before COVID, I used to tell people when they would come in my office, I would say, you know, there's a, there's an imaginary box outside. Uh, you can put all your baggage in that and then come in. Please just leave it all in 2021 and come with us to 2022 we got shit to do uh it's gonna be some fun some fun stuff all right uh what happened to PoetCon? PoetCon, where'd you go uh i just want to make sure okay yes but anyways uh I didn't check the chat, make sure ever, anyone had any questions or anything. Yes. Um, I can't do this. I don't know what that means. Uh, but yeah, so otherwise, please just come, just come back. Uh, I am not planning on doing anything tomorrow night uh, outside of the New York Post Cafe. I signed up for that, so I'm doing that tomorrow night. If anyone wants to come to New York, come to New York, New York, New York uh, you can come and get a ticket to watch. And uh, shit, I would give my ticket to Stephen Blaine if he showed up. Like that man needs to be featured in the fucking forum. Like oh, that, that man makes everything better. I hope he comes for New Year's Eve. I hope you all come to New Year's Eve. And uh, if you have not got your your copy, please get your copy of Touching Tongues. Let's go. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you Woo! Friday night, right? Poe Khan's going to be hosting with me. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be great. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And these times, we need to plan events on the holidays, y'all. I realized that from Christmas because I didn't, I, I, you know, I didn't have something in place for me and I, I felt remiss so i will not let that happen again for my mental health yes and i know that other people feel the same so let's go man you know and for my regular hosts there's the whole sign up list of fifth of fifth days of the month there's only two maybe three fifth days of the month and that's it the list is i think there's there's like maybe 10 from january to may maybe like if you want to do a fucking pop-up open my like look at tonight tonight was a huge success and we erica you and i said it like nine hours ago oh well let's do let's do a pop-up tonight okay. okay right yeah. uh you, but if you plan it and you guys if you if you, if you want to do workshop you want to do an open mic you want to do something themed you want to do uh karaoke whatever it is we can get the poster made and get it set up and start advertising advertising it um you know take advantage of those fifth days their first come first serve and they're really there so that people like clearly tonight having 21 people in the room uh uh clearly there is a need for the fifth days of the month uh, people want that and uh you should take advantage of that for sure. Uh, please follow myself. Please follow Poet Con, uh, Erica Chili, uh, the Fishnet Poet. Uh, she's got two incredible books. Uh, Nick P. Uh, Nick P. is in the room. He's got his Wednesday show. He's also got Adverse Reaction Journalism. Brian Franco was here earlier too. I mean, there's so many things. Like it's just too many to mention. Just stick around. Word is right. We'll introduce you to the right people. We'll get you plugged into the right places. Thank you so much, E, for, for doing that with me. I had no idea. I was like, I hope that was cool. I hope I didn't like shame, push it, bring shame upon your bass guitar. <laughs> uh, if you wanna do a, a collab, like a sexy collab, like on an erotic poem, I don't know. Bass and sexy just doesn't seem to go together, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> we call watch, 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 little... watch. <clears throat> three words. Three words to prove you wrong. You ready? Mm -hmm. Dick 
me down. Oh my god, can you imagine, Erica, you and I doing a dick me down poem with the bass guitar? <laughs> this is officially a thing. That is, <sighs> yep, that's beautiful. Um, bass is sexy, bass is sexy. <laughs> So yeah, anyways, if you want to do a collab, we could totally put out a track. I'm, yes, 100% on board with that. And the rest of you, I hope you get your pens ready, lick them, talk dirty to them, whatever you need to do, get them ready. New Year's Eve is right around the corner. Get your middle fingers ready to say fuck you to 2021. Let's get down and dirty with 2022. She'll never know it hit her. And I'm excited about that. Thank you all so much for being here. E, thank you so. Oh, oh my God. Did Emma not read yet? She we are going to close out the night with. She's, she's closing out. Emma, I can't. Where the fuck are you? Hello. Sorry. I haven't got. I'm so confused on here. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm on my phone and then it scrolls through different pages. I have to keep going to the messages. I'm so lost. Next time I'm going to sign in on my laptop. Yeah. Um, You're going to sign on my laptop in my bed, holding yeah. my clit still. Yes. Uh, that, yes. Let's go. I have here. to say that piece that you two performed with the music, man, that was fire. Now you've made me, cause I wanted to read my new piece, but I want to read my Venom piece because I read it to somebody and they said it needed to go with a video and they did it for me and it really, really worked. And I thought, I want this piece to go to music. And so now it makes me want to read this piece. <clears throat> So you did that, but seriously, that was fire. And I love the way you played. I was like, okay, I'm hooked. So if you don't mind me reading my Venom piece. Let's go. Okay. Are we, I just wanna, are you, we're inviting Mr. Macler to join in with the Venom oh. piece. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, Ethan, it, are you it, gonna, are you? I just wanted, if that was an opportunity presenting itself, I just wanted to let that be just known. Yes, I mean, yeah. he is very welcome you are willing, to if he feels willing. the flow. All right. Are you waiting to see if Ethan can handle all of this? I think that's a very <laughs> important thing. All right, Ethan. <laughs> handle your wood. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> your venom. I crave. I know you are bad for me. Toxic, deadly. Yet I still want you. I see the poison dripping from your lips. Yet I want to taste. Drink you in. Want your deadly, vicious tongue rammed down my throat. Infect me, destroy me, tear me apart from within. I see the warning signs. I still do not back away like a ball to the red black i'm yours take me kill me poison me with your wicked toxic love and that's that piece Wow. <laughs> yes. How you close out the night right yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, that sounds so cool. Was that to your liking, yes. Ellen? That was 
just I don't have words. I'm just hand gestures. I, I love right that. Now. I love that. That was. I mean, I just love your playing for starts because I love that sound. And I was like, okay, seriously. And um, you just made me as I heard you playing with Marissa earlier. I was like, oh man, I really want something to happen with my Venom piece. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. Yes. Oh my god. Let's like let's do a let's do a yes. We'll do something sexy, the four of us. Uh yes. It yeah. needs to be done because seriously, that I mean for one, oh. his playing is just amazing. I'm hooked. I could listen to you all night. You are seriously fire. I've not met you before. Oh my god, I'm you like, know you okay. know what would be so funny? What would be so fun is if each of us was a different chord. Oh yeah. shit! And then we all had a monologue on each chord. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. that, yes. Oh. And then he could strum our chords, and then we would come in on our chords and speak. Um, <gasps> I'm just saying, it would be fire. You know, it, 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 it take oh. it take a bit of work to work out what goes where, but yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, the piece you two did together, that that was like that was just perfect for something off off the you know, off the draw, no no working it out, no nothing. That was fire. It oh. made my nights to be here and witness that. Yes. Oh my god, can you imagine like I, I would mm. love it to be um if we each had a chord and he strummed us to almost like he was almost like he was puppeting us in our speech through his music. And so we would speak during the chords, but then like maybe he, we all kind of combined to harmonize and take over the bass mm -hmm. and like spank his naughty ass with his own bass. Yeah. Voice. Well, I just think that sound is so sexy. And like, that's what I didn't get when you were like, I don't know if it'd work with, I'm, I'm sorry, but I find that it's so sexy that it's gonna work with erotic, sensual pieces. It's, it's going to, it's just gonna draw you in more and it's like gonna slam you in the face. <laughs> If you were to even slow it and do the even the wow wow, mm. like that would be like dragging your dick across my face and then thumping it on my head. Like, oh my mm -hmm. God. what does that See, sound that's like? Just pure sex. That's Talk just pure that. sex right there. I'm just saying. It's like, okay. You know what? My hair smells amazing right now. Oh, you should come make, make it smell like some cum. <laughs> if, if you figures can't figure out how to make that happen on the guitar like oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta totally let's do that let's, and poor poet cost she's getting she's losing her shit in the background um <laughs> but so no, thank you for letting I'm me read that piece. Saying, i can't take it i just can't <laughs> it's just so it's it's magical it's magical and i really i really hope we get a chance to pull that together and do that with you, Mr. Mackler, because and the fact that you're willing to just um, jump improv in the moment um, that sh that says so much about you. Well, where um, where is everyone located? Right. Well, I'm in. It, I, 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 hell, I'm in the U.S. in Texas. I know Texas. it would be. It would be in Texas. I'm in New Mexico. Uh, Emma is in the U.K. Nick is in Jersey. That's Jersey. all. No, for who is he in here? And Matt Mackler, where are you? Where are you? I'm in Boston. Fucking why you gotta be so far away? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm gonna try not to be angry about that. Um <laughs> <laughs> I have to say though, it's it's great to meet you and thank you for, for doing that because mm -hmm. you didn't have to. And as I say, that that absolutely made my night. So thank you. I think that Matt, I, th I don't know. I think Mackler might be in trouble if he ever got the four of us to do an erotic piece with him. I don't know how he would be able to pick his, um, pick his strings. I am. Um... Well, you, you never know. It might make, you know, it might, 
it might just cause a massive fire. You just don't know. You I'm just okay don't with, know. I'm okay. I'm okay with fire. I'm totally okay. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to finish the the show. As I say, I, I was going to do my new piece to explain the A-T-E-E. -E. <laughs> and then I thought after I heard that, I was like, okay, Do that no. on New Year's. Do it on New Year's. But in the beginning when it's not so late. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will get you, I'll fucking make you a shirt that says that. Yes. Um. I, God bless it, let me know when your fucking package gets there because now I'm worried it's been like three weeks. I will, as I say, I didn't know. I was expecting I, anything in the I mail, but I've not it, had the cards. I sent it in enough time I thought you might get it by Christmas. And now it's still not there, so. No. But, but yes. Oh my God, M Mac uh, E, let's go. Um, I want to make sexy music and strum your strings until you can't breathe and the rest of the people forget they're humans. Like, that's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, hit me up on Facebook. I got you. I got yeah. you. Uh, I will find you. Uh, oh, right. I will see you on Friday because I know we're going to co host on Instagram. So I will be there for that. Yes, the word is right on Instagram, right, W-R-I-T-E. I host that Thursday, Fridays on Instagram, uh, 10 p.m., uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Mount Standard Time, maybe like 10.30. I think we should do, uh, fuck it. it takes people forever to get there on Thursday, Fridays. So I'm thinking like 10.30, 11 a.m. Uh, Mount Standard Time, which is 12.30 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those of you on Instagram uh yeah so but friday friday's gonna be a big day and we got fucking new year's so those of you who don't have anything to do on new year's i'm not making out with myself i'll be like mm -hmm. uh so i will be making out with a bottle of champagne uh the rest of you all can come make out with champagne with me uh and mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe not feel so fucking alone <laughs> there you go it's gonna be a great time Erica, are you coming up here? I'm. Um, All right, you just we'll messaged talk about me it. and stuff. My, okay. This is a disaster. I just got to know. All right. Uh, the, re <laughs> I get it. Okay. the rest of you, I will see you all beautiful asses in my dreams. But the rest of you, I will really, truly see you tomorrow or Friday. If not, don't forget the first uh, cash slam of 2022 is Saturday night. At least get your cash slam scores in early uh, so that if we do in 2022, like we did this year, you can at least qualify for it, uh, to get to the grand slam. Let's go. I love all you. Oh, wait, you know, we should do the toast. You guys want to do the toast? Let's do, let's do the toast. I mean, it's not my normal Saturday. Um, it, Saturday. It's not my normal Saturday night, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's um, this is so, that makes it even better. All right, grab your grab your drink. Grab your grab something. Grab some. There you go. Yeah, you cook, <laughs> Wait, yes, Mac, Macler, move your hand like more like this. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, okay, that's better. You can drink better from that. All right, here we go. <laughs> Here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Mm -hmm. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. Mm -hmm. For we may or may not ever all be here again. Thank you all mm -hmm. so much. God bless. Happy New Year. Hope to see you all Saturday and Friday night into Saturday. Much love. Peace. Peace, Peace everyone. Y'all awesome. Peace Goodbye. and blessings, y'all. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace.